This episode is supported by Serith Logistics, Indieflate, Tackler Products, Lacey, and Tracks for Africa. Overlanding, by definition, is vehicle-dependent adventure travel. I overland travel because I enjoy the wild and the wild places I get to visit in Southern Africa. And as someone who really enjoys exploring and the spirit of travel, I class myself as an overlander. Overlanding in Africa comes with its challenges though, and that adds to the exploration of new, untamed places. Wherever you are in the world, make the excuse to get out and enjoy the adventure that is life. I'm Ryan Crocker, and this is 4x4 Ventures. I bought this Ford Ranger eight years ago, and it's time for an update. This Ford Ranger, being the T7 2016 model, 2.2 XL 4x4 double cab manual. It's got an inline four-cylinder motor and a motor and vehicle I've been very happy with. So let me walk you around and show you what I've done to not only update the Ford Ranger, but what I've done to make it better. Let's dive on in. I'm busy running the 28565 R18 tire. Now it is a strange size tire for a Ford Ranger, but it's a tire I find is narrow enough and gives me enough rubber between the mag or rim and the asphalt. This allows for a lot more of a comfier ride when doing corrugation and a lot of long drive and mileage type trips. It is the CST Sahara All-Terrain 318 tires. I'm busy testing them for the CST International brand. A big shout out to them for sending me their tires to test here in Africa. And thus far, I'm very happy. I get good traction, great grip, and a very strong 10 layer build in the rubber compound itself. The sidewalls are three ply layer built as well. So a very strong and robust tire, like I say, Good traction, a intermediate to soft rubber compound on the tire. The only thing I'm not sure on is how will they wear over time. The rims are a courtesy of High Q Centurion. A big shout out to them. I'm running the RHC off-road rims with a negative offset on the tire itself, just because I didn't want the tires or the rubber to sit out of wheel shrouds. The suspension what I have done as a result of getting a train canopy setup combo I've gone with the old man emu leaf springs at the back but I haven't gone with the standard 400 nor have I gone with the 600 I'm now running 800 kilogram constant leaves at the back of the Ford Ranger and just to assist them a big shout out to Norman from Econo Lifts what he's done is he's gone and put in airbags and these airbags have really changed the way I drive. A lot more comfy on road, stiffer when I need them to be and I have the option of interchanging the bellows from left or right with a ball valve in the middle. So this allows for greater traction between tires when doing those off camber obstacles out on overlanding trips. This is something that has really helped the Ford Ranger. I can get the ride height just right 
where it needs to be, not too high. And like I said, the airbags are just an assist. So a big thank you to Norman. Norman's also gone and done and come have a look at this. I'm running the T-Max 160 liter compressor inside the smart tray canopy at the bottom here. And what Norman's done is he's gone and integrated a split in the valves. So I can literally fill the two tires at the back and I got a main line that runs all the way to the front and I can just jack into the front and fill up the two tires in the front. I think it's a brilliant unit and I've been testing it on this trip and it really works and comes in handy when using the new digital Indy flat unit. But all in all, the airbags and this uh, compressor system I think is really, really easy going when out there doing this. I always find that when I'm on these trips, I find that I've got to do tire deflating and inflating in the middle of the day. And when it's hot like it is in Africa, you just want quick, efficient, and you just want to get the job done. And with this system set up, there's no more schlep, especially with this Indiflate unit. It just makes life so much easier. Let's have a chat about the smart cap tray and canopy. So, one of the most amazing additions to the Ford Ranger thus far has been the smart cap tray and canopy. The tray being beneath this mark here and the canopy being upwards of that. One of the difficulties with the tray and canopy setup, number one, is you've got to get your buck off. No one talks about this. In South Africa, we get our vehicles, our 4x4 double cab utes or buckies, we get them with a buck or back and you've got to take this off and you've got to get rid of it and that's quite a big job and a big deal but once that's done i rolled into smart cap south africa and they did the fitment of this unit and i'll tell you what it's one of the best things i've ever done but there are some things you need to know let's open this up and i'll show you <laughs> From the exterior, the minute you grab the two interlocking handles and swivel them open, you know you're in a different league. And you really are. Quality. This unit is absolutely so well made and it's a very rigid structure. And from the grip of both lock keys, I'll tell you what, for me, I absolutely love it. The Gullwing's doors open up and you get great height. And what also comes really nice with these gullwing doors is the molly plates on the inner panels. So you can store and stash whatever you need to on it. I've got spades, fishing rods, uh, a small Viking axe from MS Custom Creations. And yeah, it's just, it's just brilliant for extra storage space. And you've got them on all panels of the smart cap tray and canopy. Come have a closer look. Immediately after opening the gullwing door, you'll notice one thing and one thing only, and that is space. It's 1.8 meter by 1.8 meter. You do get an extra 700 millimeters over the standard load bin or buck that comes with the vehicle. 700 millimeters extension means quite a few things, and I'll chat about that a little bit later, but space. And from this point on, you have a blank canvas, which I suppose to some degree might be considered a little bit of a downside with the Smart Cap International tray and canopy. You don't have the option from them themselves of totally kitting out the interior of it. And as of yet, from what I know, I don't know if this is something they're going to look at doing. So everything I've had to do from this point onwards has been on my own steam and quite a costly exercise. Between the lip 
of the smart cap tray and canopy you get about an 8 to 10 centimeter gap i wanted to utilize that space so what i did was i built a floor and on that floor i have little trap doors that i use for storage what's also quite nice with the smart cap tray and canopy is the height of the doorway you can load and i've had some really big fridges 96 liters i'm now using the 90 liter dermatic So when you get a system set up like this, one of the priorities for anybody should be how do you keep your stuff either frozen or at fridge level cold? Well, you have to get a fridge, but then you have to ask yourself the question, how do I get this fridge in and out of the tray and canopy? What I've done is I've got the uh, 96 liter stuff, but drop down fridge slide it's a bit clunky and if i'm honest it hasn't worn too well over the last two and a half years but maybe that's a little bit unfair i have put this whole system through a proper series of tests on all my overlanding trips and in all honesty i don't think it's too bad when you consider it at this stage you know with putting over 68,000 kilometers of hard kilometers it is in the condition that it's in. It probably just needs a little bit of a refresh, a little bit of a touch up here and there, maybe even a service, but it still works. And the nice thing about this one is, this unit is you can slide out the fridge. And it drops the fridge down to a level that makes it accessible to get into both the deep freeze or the fridge side. So someone once said to me, well, Ryan, your idea of having and re trying to regain that space back underneath the floor is quite a silly idea. Well, not really. I value between loading space and packing space. They're two different utilitarian types of loading and packing that any overlander would use. So I've got these little secret trap doors that essentially pop open on nitro pistons and give me back that space that eight to ten centimeters that i initially lost that was unusable space i now have it back with a level decking on the top so for example sake this one here i have plates knives forks uh, all the cutlery you might need as a individual or couple over landing and i've got my little coffee station brilliant underneath the fridge behind me i pretty much got all this space open for like rye grids cleaning up buckets you name it wooden cutting boards, gas fire sticks, all of that sort of stuff lives underneath the fridge. So brilliant, I'm gaining back space. And what's most important about all of this is I can now load on the top of it. Yes, yes, it means I've got to take that stuff out when I get to camp, but the stuff that I'm carrying is not a mountain of stuff. In fact, on this trip, being here at Matusa Donna in Zimbabwe on our Zambia, Zimbabwe overlanding expedition, I'm packing for two people. So it hasn't really been that much of an issue to take stuff off of the top, stash it around the side of the vehicle, and then put it back in when we need to. So for me, at the moment, this works. However, I am considering doing a complete change of the tray and canopy system, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Let's pop around to the back. So at the back of the smart cap tray and canopy, one of the big things that I really love about this unit is being able to store two tires. So I've got the CST Sahara AT All-Terrain 318 tires. On the back, they're big tires. This means with the strange tire size that I'm using, I have my spares. I think two at this stage, and even on a long trip like we're doing right now, is more than enough. But what's really awesome, other than being able to store two big tires on the back, is this. talk about space and I absolutely love this I store a ground mat and two additional ground mats on top that are hard rubber plastic my solar panel cables with extension and my two solar panels and almost talk about kitchen sink I do bring a broom this broom I use to clean my sea gear floor mat and I tell you what if you know anything about anything it's always nice to keep your ground sheet nice and clean so space this really offers space. If I had anything to say that I would like done, this may be a topping for this, so then it can serve as a dual purpose. One as a tabletop, and then obviously just keep any dust that may get in here from not entering in. But what a great little system this is. And I'll tell you what, if you need space, then this is what you'll get. Okay, so on the driver's side of the vehicle. Now, 
as you have seen it and are looking at it now, the vehicle's in use. And this is how I would probably store all my stuff during the day. On this side, underneath the secret door, I have my pantry. I keep all my chips and all of that sort of stuff underneath here. And underneath this one, I keep my clothes. Now, I only ever need my clothes either early morning or in the evening to shower up. So I use this top section here to do all my um, charging, putting in lights and all of that sort of stuff. And I'll show you the electrical system that comes from 414 megawatt straight of park. So not only is it important to consider bringing a fridge along and the compressor's on at the moment, so you might hear that, but another big thing when thinking of doing overlanding is your electrical system. I've gone with the Vectron units for just reliability and sheer strength and quality. It is a really good product and one I'm very happy with. It is an expensive buy-in, but once you're in, just works and works seamlessly. A big thank you to 4x4 Mega World Stratum Park for setting this whole integrated unit up. What I've done is I've kept the back as a total, complete, self-contained unit as far as electrics go and the front from the starter battery on its own. The only connection point is from the starter motor into the Orion DC Victron unit to get a charge to the two lithium 108 batteries that I have at the back of the car in front runner boxes. This system here is brilliant. It allows me to both charge as I drive from DC to DC. And I also have the option when parked up under a tree like today, I put my solar panels out and I can get charged that way. I also have the 500 watt inverter from Victron. Look, it might be a little bit small for this, but I'm quite happy with it. It allows me to charge my gear in the future Future, I would like to upgrade to maybe a 1200 watt, maybe a 1500 watt inverter. It's just a very costly thing, like I said. I also have the MPPT. It's the 75 over 15. What this allows me to do is put a charge in from solar panels of 15 amps. Again, maybe a little bit small because with the lithium, the LiFePo 4 batteries, they can take any charge you throw at it. So I think if I were to get the 100 over 30 MPPT, I think that would be a much better solve for charging these batteries a lot faster and getting them back up to spec really quickly. Half the time, essentially. But yeah, really good system. For now, I'm very happy. This is one of those bits of kits that, to be honest, really fits the saying. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. The legends over at Easy On reached out and realized that I didn't have a solve for shade on those hot days or protection from the wind and the rain. So I'm testing out their new Manta Ray 270 degree awning. It's a very light aluminium built unit. The awning is made of light non-rip grey canvas and there are four drop down square bars that lift and support the awning on full extension. It is easy to set up for a full 270 degree coverage and makes the rig a great gathering point when set up on those hot days. Brilliant. I use the heavy duty storm straps from Wild Dog Outdoor just to protect the awning from any severe wind rushes that often do happen and without warning. Overall, this is a setup that takes three to eight minutes to set up depending on how hard the ground is. So I've been using the Sea Gear products for a while now. And if you don't know what they are, they are the sand-free ground sheets or ground mats. And uh, they just sent over something that's really cool. They saw that I didn't have anything for when I put my ladder down. So they sent me over a 1.5 by 1.5 meter little square. To see a gear, a little ground mat for my ladder. So let me show you. So, I went with lithium. Yes, that's right, the LifePo 4, 108 amp hour, and I went with two of them. And this just allows me to essentially have one big 216 amp hour battery. This is brilliant. I find that this is the safe number when doing what I do. Anything over 18 days, 28 days, this is what you need. I can basically get a good three to four days of this fridge or any fridge and they all roughly use the same amperage per hour, I can get three to four days of battery usage from these. Obviously, some days are a little bit different, and when it's really hot, the battery doesn't like to take charge, both of them, 
and they seem to dissipate charge really quickly. So these are things to take into account and that's anything over 45 degrees Celsius. At this stage, just really happy to have a reliable solution, battery solution, storage solution for battery power. And I think it's a great option. So if you are looking at getting a good battery solved, then consider this. You get seven year warranty on the batteries and you get 2000 cycles per battery, which I think is absolutely brilliant. I think that works out to, and I stand to be corrected, I think 30 years, something like that. You get good usage is what I'm saying. So very happy with the lithium batteries. Let's go over to the other side and I'll show you the electrical setup. So when it comes to being able to charge your gear, get power in on anything you need that needs power, then the guys at 4x4 Mega World Stratton Park, they didn't mess around. I tell you, boy, I told them what I need and they said, yeah, we're going we're gonna to give you more than you actually need. I have a 240 volt uh, plug point here, which plugs into the inverter, the 500 watt inverter. Anything with a two pin plug or a three pin plug, I can plug it into here and I can get power that way. I also have a whole bunch of little ports here, cigarette lighter ports. I have USB quick charge, three USB ports. The only port I'm missing is the USB-C port, but I have little adapters that go into the cigarette lighters and that seems to work just fine for me. I also have little light switches here to allow me to run my steady rock crawler lights that I have fitted into the canopy itself. And I've got an amazing little switch here for a pump and geyser. The pump and geyser that I'm using is the the quick pitch six liter per minute geezer and the pump I'm using is a 12 liter per minute pump. I find that this works really nicely. I've got a 42 liter water tank underneath the tray and canopy setup and I just get really good usage. But I wanted to show you this. I have a really nice little bag created by Wild Dog 4x4. Thank you so much, Jacques. This stuff you, you create is amazing. And uh, I use quite a bit of his gear. I just think it's just top quality. And he's made me a little pouch. I have a little um, pipe that's got a little bidet nozzle on the end, I know, and uh, that works just just great. I mean, I get enough pressure to wash, shower, and it allows me to be somewhat conservative when it comes to how much water I'm using per shower. I haven't used it too much, but I tell you what, when you do need it, especially for washing up plates, dishes, those sorts of things, it's just super, super handy. What else about the tray and canopy system? The nice thing is it also comes with a table up at the top here. I think that's brilliant. I mean, it just, you know, you flip the latch, you push and you drop the table down and you pull the table out. And the same thing when you put it up, I'm doing it with two hands now, put it up, pull forward, and it's got this really nice lock and that's it locked. It won't go anywhere. So yeah, all in all, um, I really like the smart cap tray and canopy system. It's 325 kilos, like I've said. And um, the only thing that I wish I had the option of doing was getting the interior completely decked out by them and maybe being a little bit more customizable in that way. However, the context that I have made and the work that has been done to the train canopy system has worked up to this point. As the game goes and evolves and changes, and now that I've just taken my brother-in-law on the trip, this is the first time I've ever traveled with two people in the car. There are things that I've now started to notice and say, well, maybe I should change this. And one of those is I'm actually thinking of trying to add some sort of little drawer system in here and maybe an extra table or two that slides out underneath the drawer. I think with drawers, you've got more storage space, but it still allows me to load on top. So packing space is increased and loading space sort of remains the same. But really loving this system, I, I think it's really awesome. I think it's a great solve to space. If space is what you need, then this is an option. You know, you can even put things like your, you know, recovery tracks on these molly plates that sit on the inside. I think it's just brilliant. And one of the biggest bonuses to getting a tray and canopy system for myself is this. I get to fit a full length rooftop tent on the top. So, to the front of the vehicle, and yes, I know, if you follow the show, then you'll realize there's been one massive, massive change. Well, actually two. The first change is, 
I've moved over from a long whipped antenna for the VHF radio system to an MTAC shorty aerial. I, I do believe you get an even shorter one, but I just liked it because I see them so often in Australia and I had such a curiosity for them. I paid into this one and to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm getting the range that I was told I would get. Look, it hasn't really failed. I mean, the quality is brilliant between MTech antenna and MTech antenna. The, the, the quality of the, of, the, of the intercom is brilliant, but it's about the distance. You know, I think when we do overlanding, I think if you can get between 15 to 20 kilometers range on flat ground, I think that's brilliant. That's where you need to be. At the moment, I'm probably getting between six and nine kilometers on flat ground range between MTech to MTech. So I'm not too sure if there's an issue with this one or what the problem is, but and maybe an upgrade to this at some point in the future. Probably the biggest change to the Ford Ranger is as of recently, I had Hammer Africa reach out to me and say, Ryan, we'd love to upgrade your vehicle and give it a new look. So they've given me the hammer bumper and i'll tell you what this thing is really nice for one reason and one reason alone and that is the fog light these fog lights are e-spec which is a protocol that we need to have in south africa it doesn't blind oncoming traffic or anything like that and uh, thus far it's a really great unit the only thing that concerns me is these are not actual recovery points these are just for show and i'm okay with that i don't mind about a little bit of bling here and a little bit of bling there to make the vehicle look good and I think it makes the vehicle look absolutely stunning. Hammer bumper, really happy with it and what's really nice is it comes with actual proper recovery points mounted to the chassis underneath in red. And those are something I haven't had to use yet but I tell you what when I do have to use them rest assured I know I'll get recovered no problem. And yes I'm still using the Steady Type X Pros. I really like the Steadies. They've just, they've done me very well. They've been completely submerged in water. No problems, no issues. Let's go to the inside of the vehicle and I'll give you a quick chat of what's happened on the inside. There's been some massive improvements in there and I'm really happy to show you. So what's happened to the Ford Ranger since the last time I spoke to you? Well, quite a few additions and quite a few additions that are real game changers for myself, especially with the smart cap train canopy system, because I had very little to no visibility out the back window, in fact, zero. The only things that were getting me by were my side mirrors with the little additional magnifying mirrors on the ends and tips. Those were the only things that could help me with blind spot. But as far as actual reversing goes, I had a massive blind spot. I couldn't see where I was going. So have a look at this. One of the great additions to the Ford Ranger has now been the OneNav integrated heads-up display unit. It's blooming brilliant and I'm loving it. And I've just recently had the upgrade to it. So all the little kinks and delays that I did have in the previous version or upgraded then uh, is now sorted. So as I said in one of my episodes regarding the OneNav unit, it's nice to get a system that's completely working and working very well. So I really love the OneNav unit. It's a game changer. You've got integrated maps, integrated phone calls, integrated music, video, you name it it's here plus the amplifier so you can change your equalizer settings to get the kind of side quality you want and i'm loving this unit a big change to the ford ranger 2.2 xl model if you used to have that old heads up display unit it's kind of bad really bad now full color integration loving it absolutely loving it I'm also using and have been using for eight years now and loving it and still loving it. Yes, it doesn't get it right all of the time, especially in some of these more wilder places that you go to. Roads change. I do use Tracks for Africa on the Garmin system. It's an old Garmin system. It does the job. If anything, it's pretty delayed when you finger touch it or anything like that. It doesn't work the best. And as far as detail goes, it's pretty bland and not really all that impressive, but it's a solid unit. It works for me. I'm quite happy. And if I don't use that, then I just use 
Google Maps, which then, then show up on the OneNav unit. There's something else I wanted to show you I was chatting about a little bit earlier, and that is being able to see behind the smart cap train canopy. Have a look at this. The One X rear view mirror is a completely digital system. And the great thing with this is it can record in whatever five minute loop you might want. It would either overwrite it. It also has crash sensitivity. So bang sensitivity, crash sensitivity. If something bangs your car, it'll start recording at the front and at the back. It's got a camera integrated here, comes with a microphone and it will record what you needed to record when you need to record. But it's just nice for me to be able to access reverse gear and have a look at where exactly I'm going. It also has guidelines so you know where you are close to the rear of the vehicle when you're intermediately close to anything or you know any obstacle obstruction in the way and when you're in the green you know you're safe you know you're good to go so it's really handy to have this unit when you have the smart cap train canopy 100 percent and i really like it it also does a dip so if you're going at night time you can lower the brightness really really happy with the one x unit brilliant you know you can even do a dual split on the screen so that you can see both your front facing camera and your rear facing camera it's a bit of a trip but if you need it it doesn't so listen guys as you see the vehicle now it is in use so it's pretty dirty pretty dusty and i tell you i'm not normally like this i can't handle this kind of stuff i'm pretty ocd when it comes to my vehicle but i tell you what the tacky seat covers that use a cantec material you know what i've used these for four years now they are the signature black range i absolutely love them i love them because it prevents a lot of sweating it's waterproof stain proof easy to take off and wash and just really comfortable i went with the all black black on black and i'm really happy that i did they are absolutely filthy at the moment but that's fine because underneath i've got leather seats so i know that the leather underneath is still in good quality being protected and being looked after i even have the tackler dash cover love it it's got little pockets everywhere it is airbag compliant i've got little velcro straps here and there if i want to put something on the top I can do that. I also have the tack mats. The tack mats are brilliant, they, but they are underneath these 3D mats that I have and uh, just doubling up on protecting the actual carpet of the vehicle. And if any water does happen to spill or then you know everything is nice and safe and protected and just comfy so i really like the tackler signature black range i just think they're an absolutely priceless addition to any vehicle when i got these made i got little pockets and pouches and i can just store everything everywhere and i just know that it's looking after my leather underneath but i tell you what time to move to the top of the vehicle this one you gotta see Runner. Okay, talk about precarious positions. Just climbed up here like a monkey using the eye camper ladder. That thing is brilliant and comes in handy like you won't believe. So being up on the roof, I wanted to chat to you about the roof rack and system that I'm using. I'm using the Slimline 2 roof rack system from Frontrunner, the new one, the one with the updated roof arms that go into the roof seal of your vehicle. There is sometimes drilling that might need to happen. This thing is absolutely brilliant. It carries a lot of weight. I have the Frontrunner jerry cans. I have 40 liters this side and 40 liters this side. They're empty at the moment and I have the jerry can holders which are absolutely fantastic and are up to the test to hold them. We've got the ones with the new latches and I really love them. I think it's just easy access to use and brilliant. I can literally open the jerry can, I can fill up, no problem. The roof rack itself is up to the task in holding the weight. If you think about it, this is 80 kilos. I'm about 98 kilos and I have two boxes. The Front Runner Wolfpack Pros boxes here, also love them. I use those for storage and they're carrying about 30 kilograms. So that's a lot of weight up here. When doing these long trips, unfortunately, there is no other way for me to do this. I have to put the weight on the roof. I just don't have the storage space that will allow me to carry the four jerry cans, especially when visiting places like Zambia. You don't know if fuel is in shortage or 
you know, that you can't get fuel, you need to carry 80 liters. So it is a risk for me, but I kind of understand by this stage, after doing it for quite a while now, I have an understanding of what happens to the vehicle when I overload on the top. I changed my driving style. I don't think you can just overload the top of your vehicle. It is very dangerous. 80 kilograms is, is the margin, is the threshold. It is ill-advised to go over the 80 kilograms unless you really have to and have an understanding of what's going on with your vehicle from a safety point of view. Things like upgrading your brakes, things like upgrading your suspension, things like changing and adapting your driving style. What's also really nice with the front runner roof rack system is the integration of all the other products. Some of the other integrated accessories that I'm running on the side of the roof rack and that's one of the great things with this roof rack. You can also mount to the side of it. On this side I have a recovery spade, a flat spade and I use that all the time with these little easy ratchets, front runner ratchets that allow for quick access to the spade. Blimmin' brilliant. When you're out there in the heat and you need to do a recovery, Boom, pop it open, you've got it. I also have on this side, I have the wild dog privacy shower cubicle, which I use all the time, especially on those trips where there is no water and I need to have a shower. I can carry this thing on the side of the front runner roof rack and it's absolutely brilliant. With this layout and configuration that they'll do as per your request, I can open up my rooftop tent. I have the five kilogram gas bottle holder, brilliant. Absolutely locks in and it's rock steady and solid. Doesn't move, shift a millimeter, it's excellent. I recently had two new things added to the roof rack system that I'm so excited about. I've got an LED light, integrated light on the left hand side and I have front runners little swivel light which is brilliant. Absolutely power. At the moment I'm really happy what's going on on the roof but yeah the front runner roof rack system for integration, ease of use, simplicity, strength, durability, very happy. And I've put a lot of kilometers on this one and I'm just so happy. And thanks to front runner Kyle Army South Africa. Thanks for your support. Really appreciate it. It was so good to see you guys the other day. By this stage, it's time to head to the new edition of the Ford Ranger and something I've been wanting for a very long time and so excited to show you. The iCamper 2X version 3 rooftop tent. The iCamper 2X version 3.0, a really nice and probably the latest addition to the Ford Ranger that I think packs a punch. Not only does it look good on the Ford Ranger and feels really integrated, it's also very aerodynamic. I think a lot of the R&D that's gone into creating the shell of the iCamper 2X has really paid off because even with my previous rooftop tent, although it was a very low and flat profile tent and you would think that it was aerodynamically suited, it wasn't really. And I think with this one, you will definitely definitely feel the difference. Also, it's a much lighter tent. At 55 kilos, my previous tent was at 75 to 80 kilos. So those are things that really work for me from a weight saving point of view. Look, I mean, the range is really heavy now with everything added, water on, jerry cans, you know, two extra spares, the rooftop tent, the roof rack, all of it is now very heavy. So any little savings that I can make, I'm very happy to. It's not the fastest tent to set up, if I'm quite honest, but all of that goes out of the window on two parts. The first part being quality. It is a quality built product. I mean, from the stitching, the waterproofing, the seams, the integrated zips, the even the mosquito gauze is of a premium quality. There's no compromises made in terms of the texture, the fabric used, and the quality of the stitching overall. Plus, it's got this really nice world map on the back. Now, whenever Ed and Chris set up their rooftop tents, which are the uh, iCamper Skycamp minis, you know, I always looked at their tents and thought, yo, I would love one. And it so happened that I was able to buy in partially to the uh, iCamper brand. And I'm really happy to now be a part of their family because now I too have a world map on the head or clamshell of my rooftop tent. If I'm honest, I think the mattress is a little bit thin, but I do believe there is a solve. You know, you can either add a five centimeter eggshell mattress to either the top or the bottom, up to you, your choice, which I may be doing in the future, or you can get their new iCamper inflatable mattress that comes with a little pump. I think these are great options for those of us who buy into the brand. I think the price of all rooftop tents, if I'm honest, is way out of touch and reach for somebody like myself. Bear in mind, I'm a full-time YouTuber, so it's hard for me to purchase into these brands 
and products and remain as neutral as I possibly can. But I tell you straight and as it is, this rooftop tent thus far is very, very comfortable. I could do with maybe a little bit of a thicker mattress. I really love the little windows. I always been one that's never really favored these little strut bars that hold up the awnings but they make a lot of sense you know you can sit here now on a rainy night and not get wet same for your windows you can leave them open and not get wet but the amount of storage space i have in here is unbelievable and near enough unrivaled i can keep my shoes in here i've i can close this whole tent down i have at the moment i have a sheet i have a donkey blanket i have a duvet i have a really thick and new sleeping bag which is great because the old sleeping bag was a bit old and tatty and i have a really thick pillow i can keep two of those thick pillows in here and close this whole bad boy up and no problems and i think that's where this comes into effect for me from a really you know usability great usability and efficiency. I don't have to carry my pillows in the car anymore. I mean, I use the back of the car for carrying other things, camera gear, extra clothes. Maybe I'm taking another person with me on a trip. They've got space on the other side of the seat to store what they need to. So this makes a whole lot of sense to me. And the great thing with it, and something I'm still getting used to, is the Stargazer. It actually has a roof in the top of the roof that A lets more light in, and I haven't rolled it up and done it properly, but A lets more light in, also has a mosquito gauze, or you could open the mosquito gauze, and you could have like extra airflow. You can have extra airflow. It's a, it's a hole between the layer and still waterproof. And I think that's just brilliant. I think it's a nice addition. And as far as creature comforts go, I think it's just a smart thing, you know? Who doesn't want to have a look at the stars before they go to bed or wake up in the morning to the sun rising and the birds singing in trees above you? I just think it's brilliant and well thought out. So I'm very happy with this rooftop tent. Like I said, it is a bit slower to set up and tear down, but at the end of the day, I get to store all my sleeping gear. Now, my previous rooftop tent, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I couldn't keep my pillows in. But I could have a lot of blankets, but I couldn't keep all my pillows in. And this one has a floor, a proper solid base floor designed to keep the cold out. So on those cold nights, I'm actually quite cozy in here. I think it's brilliant. I'm absolutely loving it. I haven't tested it in all the weather conditions, wind or rain as yet. It's still a relatively new addition to the Ford Ranger and I'll let you know how it goes. Don't you love it when a brand reaches out to you and says, welcome to the family? I think it's absolutely fantastic. So happy days and at this stage, zero complaints on this rooftop tent, that's for sure. So we are on the mighty Lake Kariba and it's just simply stunning. We're here at Matusa Dona. And like I said to you, the T7 2016 model 2.2 Ford Ranger XL double cab Ford Ranger is taking me eight years essentially to get to this point. And it's only happened as a result of great support from brand and product and belief in the show and what I'm trying to do. And I hope that this episode has given you some insight into what you might want to do with your overlanding vehicle. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that this is what you should buy and this is the way you should go. I'm just giving you an idea of what works for me out there in the overlanding world. And listen, my trips are 15 to 20 days. This is what I do. I create content for you guys. So to be able to stay out there and get the shots that I need, this is what I've done to get overland ready. I've put over 143,000 kilometers on the Ford Ranger. And yes, I have had issues. She's a big girl. She carries a lot of weight. Guys, from the mighty Lake Kariba, the 2023 Ford Ranger walk around and a little bit of information on the gear I use and which gear I fancy and prefer. I'm Ryan Crocker and this is 4x4 Ventures. Stay safe, keep trucking and I'll see you at the next one. I can't wait to see you out there and until then, keep well. Cheers. A big thank you to my Patreon legends. Thank you for your support. Sign up to my Patreon, link down below. In the next episode. Sad news, sad, sad, sad news, sad news. I think the Ranger's engine is gone. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's new car day. So uh, an update to the Ford Ranger. I've just come in, good news. 
they are replacing and putting a new engine in with injectors. Hatfield Ford Fourways reaches out and keeps the upcoming adventures alive. Yeah. We are here at the corner lift and it's absolutely fantastic. Opposite lock reached out to me and said, Ryan, listen, we'd love for you to test out our tough dog suspension here. A massive upgrade happens that truly changes the Ford Ranger. With time running out, I pop in to visit friends at Front Runner. Gonna rearrange some stuff for you. And they get me ready for the big trip. Uh, these are the best thing for the job. And Lionel is not sure on what he just told us. <laughs> when you come to Front Runner, a place like this, a shop with all the gear, I tell you what, it's fantastic to pick up those little things before you go on any trip. We're here now at HiQ, getting the tires balanced and wheel aligned, and yeah, exciting times. It's time for rim repairs and a six tire crossover rotation, and there's no one better than the guys over at HiQ Centurion. Tonight, we spend our first night in the wild. Reese and I finally hit the road and are very unprepared for what was going to be an unforgettable wild adventure in wild places. This is one of those adventures for the books, and we'll see you then. Coming soon. Yeah, Reese, Reese, what happened last night, bro? So, I don't know what time it was, but I woke up and I could smell something and I wasn't sure what it was. And my mesh on my tent, I can see straight through. And our table is just over there. And I could see a leopard sitting underneath the table. 